This is episode 146 and in this one we talk about business goal setting and finance. Here we go. Welcome to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and small business owners who dream big and want to do bigger. Join some of the world's top entrepreneurs, internet marketers, and best-selling authors as they share their inspiring stories, their struggles, and give actionable tips that will help you build, grow, and promote your online business. Here's your host, Yanni Lunga. Hey there, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new episode of the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who really want to leave their mark on the world. You heard it, I'm your host, like always, Yanni Lunga. And in today's episode, we take a closer look at the life of an entrepreneur, what a typical day looks like. And we are joined by entrepreneur author, small business expert, Daryl Lyons. And as I said, we're going to look at different things. We're going to look at what Daryl's typical day looks like. We're going to talk about his new book. We're going to get some advice in terms of creating a fantastic atmosphere and creating great relationships with our employees and assistants. We're going to get some overview of some of the common mistakes startups and small businesses make. And we're also going to get a couple of tips on finance. The show notes for this episode are over at yanilunga.com for slash episode 146. All right, here it is. Business, goal setting and finance with Daryl Lyons. Hey, everybody. Today we are joined by a very special guest who does so many things and who is many different things. Is a small business owner, one of America's most successful and respected financial advisors and co-founders. Is a top 100 John Maxwell Leadership Award honoree whose business has been considered one of the best places to work in and one of the fastest growing companies in San Antonio, Texas. Is also the author of the new book called Small Business Big Pressure, a faith-based approach to guide the ambitious entrepreneur. And this title is a collection of wisdom and knowledge designed for the 20-year business veteran as well as the soon-to-be entrepreneur. I'm so excited to welcome here on the show, Daryl Lyons. Hey, Daryl. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic now that I'm chatting with you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, it's today's in in. In tech, well, I guess in the country, it's MLK Day. Right. <laughs> it's, kind of a, it's kind of a calm day, so to speak. You know, I'm actually the only one in my office. Usually it's it's full of people and clients, and, and it's real quiet right now. So, yeah, this is a nice break. Yeah. No, and of course, it's a very, I know that it's a very important uh, day for the social cultural uh, dimension there in the state. So, I'm, I'm sure that many people are going to take a moment to, you know, to think about what that day means, not only necessarily for their business, but for their, for their personal life or, you know, for their families or, or the whole, uh, family more, uh, you know, in bigger terms. And really, I'm excited that you're here. And as I was saying in the intro, you do quite many different things. So there really, if someone were to ask you, how is your, your typical day? What would you tell them? Yeah. So a typical day for me involves getting up at a reasonable hour. I certainly can manage on, I can't manage on little sleep. I need eight hours, <laughs> I have to admit. And uh, so I, when I get up, I get up at a reasonable time. Typically, it's about 6 a.m., 6.15, and I spend about 30 minutes in prayer and usually reading scripture. That's really important to me. And then I dart out my day, and, and I will. what's really neat is my office is about walking distance from my home Nice in a busy part of San Antonio. So much of my day will be involved with meeting with clients and talking to them about their money or their business or their personal financial planning. I will also provide leadership to our company as the CEO. And then thirdly, I will also help share the message that I wrote about in my book, Small Business, Big Pressure. So I do carry three important hats 
at work, an author, a CEO, and a financial advisor. And then I do provide leadership to the community through various municipal organizations or international organizations providing leadership where they need leadership. Okay, so as I said, a very, very busy and involved person in the community. And I have to ask this, Daryl, because I'm just curious. What do you like most about San Antonio? Maybe that's a bit of a tough question if you were to just mention one thing or maybe even just a couple of things. Why is San Antonio so such a cool city? Well, thank you for asking that. It is important to me. I specifically chose to start a business in San Antonio as opposed to staying on a career path that would lead me to Chicago or New York. Mm -hmm. And I chose San Antonio for several reasons. And as I reflect on it, some of the greatest attributes of San Antonio are a direct result of the family lineages that were stationed here for pe- from the greatest generation ever that served our country in World War II. We have about five or six bases here now, Air Force and Army. In fact, Everyone who trains in the Air Force as a pilot trains in San Antonio. And the military's medical hub is at Fort Sam located in San Antonio. So we have generations of people that came to San Antonio as a result of our military. So the community itself takes a lot of pride in our country and has a very family-oriented structure and uh, environment. And I think for all those reasons, it makes it for a wonderful place to raise a family and to do business. So San Antonio is special, along with, I'm a big fan of the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, basketball. no. <laughs> yeah. you're, t- you're talking to a Warriors fan over here. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Yeah, so that's the, both good teams. Right. And uh, that's made it great for 20 years of enjoying that basketball team. <laughs> nice, nice. No, I think, you know, it, you make it sounds like a very interesting place. I have to say, I've been to the States. I've been around a bit in the States. I haven't been to Texas yet, but it's definitely on my on my to-do list of hopefully soon and definitely San Antonio is going to be there. So, Daryl, whenever I happen to be in San Antonio, I'm going to give you a shout out or an email you and I, we definitely have to meet in person. And now we are here over Skype to talk about, we've talked a little bit about uh, your your typical day, about what you do, about the the city you're based at and i'm curious i would like you to tell us more about your new book so you you've like literally just published it like a few days ago small business big pressure a faith-based approach to guide the ambitious entrepreneur so i think that especially the second part of the title is pretty self-explanatory but what can the listeners i have actually a twofold question for you daryl first is what can the listeners expect from the book and the second is kind of why did you decide to really kind of play with the words in terms of like small business big pressure yeah it's a good question so maybe the genesis of the book might help your listeners understand the book content and why (laughs) it was developed we have a successful small business and it really got attention from a lot of people in the community and outside the community, frankly, in in all parts of the country. I would receive phone calls from entrepreneurs asking about our marketing and asking about our business model, operations, hiring and firing. And so I started navigating and talking and researching and trying to find things that might help business owners achieve their success a little bit better, a, a, kind of a silver bullet. And then I started teaching classes to our community, and these classes would fill up, and they're complimentary, and I was just doing it simply to help some entrepreneurs and small business owners. And, and But I, I saw that there were some, some uh, concerns and some questions that business owners had, whether they were successful or not, and they were common, and there was many of them, but they were all common. And, and some of them were financial, and some of them were about the worry, or some of them were about hiring. Mm-hmm. And so I really started to develop a playbook, and that playbook was the content of my book. Some of the things that I've identified that have been good, uh, that have worked, and some very practical things. 
both that I've applied in my business, that I've seen in other businesses, uh, stories of failure, stories of success. And I packaged this in a book. And when I, when I developed the book, I gave it to my business partner to edit. I think it had about 15 edits from different entrepreneurs that I trusted and, and I wanted their feedback on the content, business owners, CPAs, different professionals. And when I got the content back, he said, you know, your faith isn't expressed that much in the book as well as I know you. And so I rewrote much of the, the content to off, be courageously authentic about my faith and really share with people how I respond to the pressure of being a small business owner and the cash flow pressures and the rejection pressures and all the anxiety that comes from being an entrepreneur and how I personally respond to it. And so the idea is of the play on words of the book cover is small business, of course. I think that's self-explanatory. I think it's a right. sweet spot for me, but it is a sweet spot in the, in the fact that you know there's some mid-sized businesses that uh, – uh, that that I probably the, the content of this book wouldn't apply to. But if you're a small business, you know who you are, and and that this is this is the right this is the right book. And then the big pressure is certainly recognizing the pressure that exists with all entrepreneurs, and and I've seen it all over the years, to counseling thousands of people, and just acknowledging that, but also recognizing how we overcome that pressure and worry. Okay, so small business, big pressure. You you have the site smallbusinessbigpressure.com and obviously like in every episode you will find the links to everything Daryl and I mentioned in the show notes so you're gonna find definitely the site there you can where you can learn more about and you can order your copy of Small Business Big Pressure and in the book Daryl you kind of have a uh, identified or you discuss four different uh, i think we can call them areas and they are destination dollar dialogue identity so obviously you know a a, a section or one of these areas alone could be a, a topic for an entire interview but could you take us a little bit through each of these and and kind of elaborate especially here for the listeners maybe for there are some people here with you and I who have no idea what we are talking about for example by destination or, or dialogue so could you take us through each and every one of these and tell us what you mean by you know destination dollar dialogue identity yeah no problem so when we start out launching a business, we have a, a destination. We have a vision of where we want to go. Typically, that vision starts with being disturbed about our current scenario. We're mm -hmm. just not happy about where we're at. And, and some of it could be about where we're at personally. We just want to have a better lifestyle, kind of stuck or frustrated financially or with the lack of flexibility in our time. Or it could be that we're frustrated because – there's a certain product or service that the market needs uh, or is demanding and it's not being taken care of and you believe that you can take care of it. So in our mind, we start to create the destination, a vision of where we want to go. And so the first quarter of the book is really unpacking how we clearly define that and you know have lack of ambiguity and focus as a result of really clearly defining the destination. And, and that step and that process – uh, frankly, has been one of the key catalysts for my business. And if you look at any successful business, most of them have spent time clearly defining their destination. And mm -hmm. small business owners don't do that very well because we want to just go out there and get it done. But those that clearly define the destination, they typically get to where they want to go faster and uh, with less anxiety along the way. And it's ev evidence shows that it's true. Evidence shows that goal setting and planning get people they're faster and accomplish more. So we go through that in the first part. Uh, and so a quarter of the book is, de is designed to get people off the couch and really hustling, but also with focus. Now, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it absolutely does. And maybe before we, we jump to, to the second area, dollar, I wanted to ask if you have some, some a couple of, of words of advice for, especially if there are some people here with you and I, Daryl, who maybe are about to start their business so this uh, conversation is just perfect for them so in terms of kind of smart goal setting or simply setting in general what what tips do you have for them what should they really keep in mind when they're thinking about uh, laying out their destination and their goals 
Yeah, I think that that when you sit down initially to lay out your destination and goals, I think it's important that you take some time out and just go to a quiet place. I'd often go to a hotel lobby mm-hmm. and drink their free coffee <laughs> and uh, just sit down and just unpack um, my dreams and write down my dreams. I would do this in a way that would would have a – I'd be able to just think about how what I wanted in life. You know, keep in mind – 20 years ago, I was in a single wide trailer in a small Texas town in Castroville, Texas. And so I would suggest to you that a large degree of the success I have today is a result of careful goal setting each and every year. And so I just want to dream. I just want to dream about the life that I want. Now, once I do that, I then set goals. So, so dreaming is more of crystallizing your desires. And then I set goals, which are the action items that I can do within my control that increase the probability that those dreams occur. And so I'm going to sit down if I say, you know, my dream is to have a a new car, let's say, then my goal would be to save $500 a month, right? So that's in my control. So I don't like to have dreams without goals. So I simply spend that time putting together my list of dreams, putting a date on them, and then attaching goals to each one of them. I love it. So you heard it. In case you're here with Darren and I, and you, you actually are about to, you know, to start following your dreams. You're about to lay out your goals. You have gotten here some some actionable tips or things that you can do pretty much right away to really get starting and and do smart goal setting. Okay, Daryl, the second area you focus on in the book is dollar. And I <laughs> I, I believe I have an idea of what that stands for. <laughs> yeah, I could have put euro. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, but my, my the guy who edited my books from Mexico, uh, actually not the editor, the editor's from Florida, but the, but the graphic designer that did all the inside graphic design, the outside's from the publisher, but the inside is from Mexico. And so he really struggled with that. He wanted me to put peso and I oh, told really? him, Doll- <laughs> I have to put dollar. I'm sorry. But yeah, so that, that segment is really once we've defined the destination uh, and we're accomplishing goals, meaning that mainly we're fulfilling the needs of the marketplace. People are being taken care of. We're solving their problems with products and services. Dollars uh, start to reflect our hard work. And so we get paid. The problem is we have to pay taxes, right? right. And so expenses and everything. Everything. And so it becomes overwhelming. And so what I want to do for small business owners is really just go through some of the basics of what a balance sheet is, an income statement, a statement of cash flow. And then we'll talk about some ratios because ratios are um, like this divided by that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so, but if, so I've been studying stocks for a long time and banking and all that. And what I found is that uh, the the people who understand ratios the are the ones that get ahead. And so I want to give that ammunition to some small business owners. So we'll talk about a couple ratios in there and and just a handful. But that that dollars part's one of the trickiest parts because it requires us to use the left side of the brain, which is typically the analytical side. And we don't want to we don't want to do that very often because it's a muscle that's that needs to be exercised. But it really we do need to spend some time uh, understanding that so we can be prepared and we don't get sideswiped by making mistakes in our business cash flow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you, you're you so right. I think that that's, a, so, like you said, I mean, that's like such an important uh, skill to have. And, and you said it like in your case, you have really studied that you you have years of experience in that field, but with the, with the section on dollar, you really help uh, every, every reader getting uh, an, uh, an understanding of, of, let's say, the necessary skills related to ratios. I like that. The third one is dialogue. And again, I think you did a, a very good job with that kind of naming the section. I think you made it pretty clear what the section is about. Yeah, so I I think it's it's clear but there's some there's some also some abil- some reason that somebody might get tripped up. Dialogue is the next step as we start a business. And and what happens is is our time becomes even more important than our money. Mm-hmm. So we decide as an entrepreneur that or small business owner that we need to hire somebody. And that might be an administrative assistant or a, a, a shop person, a helper. 
and we have to pay that person. But that's not the hard part. The hard part is the dialogue, you mm-hmm. know, the communication in we in which we hire. How do we set that standard? Um, how do we identify the right people? Then once we've hired them, how do we train them, develop them? And if they don't work out, how do we you know, carefully move them out of the organization? And so that process of having dialogue, of communicating with somebody is more than just a hire and fire. There's so much in between. And so I want to really discuss that. And that, that does inter- include personality profiles and um, the right way to communicate and the standard of excellence that we expect communication to occur. Okay, so again, Daryl here, I have to to ask you if there is maybe some of of the listeners here with you and I who who are about to or already are dealing with uh, you know with a team, whether that's uh, uh, in person or if it's online, for example, a, a virtual assistant or a team of virtual assistants. What what tips do you have in terms of uh, trying to get the relationship in the best possible way, if that makes sense, to make it work as as smooth as possible. I, I think that's great. I think that you know it would be helpful to to understand that other person's personality profile, mm-hmm. and then I think it would also be helpful to not engage maybe a virtual assistant or a contract laborer in a contract laborer type of relationship. I, I think that when you hire a virtual assistant or anybody like that, I would really want you to consider them to be a part of your team. And if they're a part of your mm-hmm. team, invest more into them than just the, here, do this for me and get it done. I, I would really get to know that person and and get them to take ownership in what they do. I think that, that the virtual assistant market is, it's still, un, it's still relatively new market. Uh, and I think it needs to be treated more so as close in, in a close employee engagement and less as a contract laborer. And so I, th- I think you just start needing to treat them as an employee, which is a good thing, not a bad thing. Yeah, no, I think you're you're so right, Daryl. And it reminds me a bit of something uh, we talked about when we had Robert Malone here on the show with, with Bill Watkins of uh, Rusty Lion Academy, because they talked about uh, outsourcing and especially they discussed virtual assistants. And they said that that's exactly what they do when they have to hire a virtual assistant or, or a series of virtual assistants, and then they eventually uh, go for them and hire them. They, they treat them as employees. They have, they use tools, for example, like Slack or Skype, like you and I are doing now to be in constant communication. And not only when a task needs to be done, but to really build that rapport that is more an employee, employer type of rapport than not that, uh, rather than just a, a freelancer, I need to do this task for kind of relationship. I like that. So, so far we've talked about destination, dollar, dialogue, and the fourth and final uh, section of your book is about identity. So what is identity about? Why is it important for small business owners? Yeah. So an identity is we have now more than one person at this point. So we realize that our one assistant, virtual assistant is good, but they don't have all the skills that we need and they don't have all the time that that we need. So we make a point to hire somebody else. And so now we've got, you know, at least three people here and they need to all be singing from the same sheet of music. So how do we get all of them to communicate? And it requires leadership to be constant in that. And I I always refer to my role as as CRO, Chief Reminding Officer. And I (laughs) constantly need to be reminding my team the principles and the guidelines in which we communicate and the standard of excellence in which communicate occur- communication occurs. It's not easy, especially when you have more and more employees, but it certainly is a primary responsibility of a leader. And I think that one can really see the connection between this dot and the previous dot, because I think that if we uh, build that rapport, that relationship with our employ- employees or, or virtual assistants or, or whoever that may be with, then it's this uh, final step of the identity. It's easier to, you know, to implement or to carry out. And because if there isn't that rapport, if we don't have that base, it's going to be more difficult to motivate employees or remind them or of our values, our principles, our goals and all these kind of things, right? 
Exactly. Yeah, you have to constantly remind them of the vision, too, and we go back to the destination. Right. In fact, when we start this process, um, what we identify is that we continue this cycle not only when we start a business, but every time we launch a new product or any time we enter new markets. And so we consistently repeat this process. And, and the process does have a lot of anxiety, worry, and pressure along the way. Right, yeah. And, you know, pressure, uh, it's a it's a key word, as we said earlier in the, in the title, so small business, big pressure. And I really like the fact, Daryl, that you emphasize this, that this is a cycle that pop-ups uh, regularly in in our life in our career and it's not something that yeah we we go through once and that's it so you told us whenever we are launching something or we are planning something we go through these four steps so destination dollar dialogue and identity and in the book you also really stress the importance of accountability and i wanted to ask you daryl uh, first of all, why, or actually maybe I would like to ask you to remind all of us here why accountability is so important. And number two, what maybe tips or strategies or something like that you have when it comes to accountability. So what can we do to make sure that we are accountable and we perform in the best way possible day in and day out? Yeah, so I I do have uh, a coach that holds me accountable. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I think that's important. I do have, I'm very, it's very tricky for me to identify and find the people that I want to hold me accountable. And it may be easier for others, but I always have high standards. You know, I really want the person to be, to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And, and the only perfect people, um, rose one rose, from the dead and the other one's my mom. So, you know, there, there's not exactly the two resources to hold me accountable professionally, <laughs> but I, uh, I do have people that hold me accountable and, and I do appreciate those people. And I do have to be courageously vulnerable about the challenges I have. And I actually bifurcate a little bit, the people that hold me accountable. Some people that hold me accountable professionally get more, uh, insight than those that hold me accountable spiritually. They get different insight. They they both get insight, but it's differently. And I just, I like people who hold me accountable that have walked through life, that have had some bumps and bruises, and that, uh, of course, are good listeners and uh, and, and that really care about my best interest. And so I I think that's really important and something that I've always strived for and I've always had, frankly, most of my life. Yeah, no, I think you you really nailed it. It's important to have... Uh, to surround yourself with people who aren't afraid to to listen and to give like real advice that they can be objective, even if sometimes it's maybe not what you may want to hear, but it's in your best interest or in your business best interest or your personal life best interest, whatever the case may be. And you said you have a coach, for example, another great way to to have people who hold you accountable, our mastermind groups. I mean, I think that nowadays and in this sense, technology is really helping us. Is It can be easy to, to, to build an accountability system. I mean, if I think about my case, for example, I'm here in Europe. I've been part of, of two masterminds and uh, the members are literally around the world. In one mastermind, we we are a couple of people from Europe, the rest from Australia. In another one, a few people from Europe, a few from the States. So regardless of where you are right now, if you're listening to, to Daryl and I, you can, and you don't have anybody who's there to hold you accountable, you can definitely look for a coach or or look for a mastermind or even do both. And another thing, uh, Daryl, that you, you have created that I, I really made a note here to ask you about, you have this ebook, 30 Small Business Startup Mistakes. And it's this ebook you have there on the, on your site. And for all of you here listening, if you, if you pre-order a copy of Small Business Big Pressure, you're going to get it. And obviously, Daryl, as I said earlier, also here, the the 30 mistakes you discuss, uh, they could be an entire podcast episode in, their se- in themselves. But, uh, do you maybe, <laughs> w- uh, would you maybe like to share a couple of these mistakes with us? So what are the, the, the small business startup mistakes that many small business or want to be entrepreneur make or are about to make? 
Yeah, I'd say the number one is not paying taxes. And I know that's easy, but but just set aside 25% of your income. Now, right. income is revenue minus expenses equals net income. Set aside 25% of your net income and and save that for the government, for the IRS. Now, the uh, the the other thing is, is the other thing I want to mention is make sure you separate personal and business accounts. Set up a different business account. So those are two things that I think right away are really simple, but a lot of people don't do it. Yeah, you're, you're so right. I think that those are often maybe overlooked. And then when, you know, when it's, for example, in the case of the taxes, see, if you don't pay your taxes, you're going to end up being in a lot of trouble. But jo- jokes aside, I think that, uh, Daryl, you have really given us here some real real life advice. You shared some uh, your expertise. You've told us more about what you do, about uh, why you like San Antonio so much and why is a city we should all visit or, or or move to. You told us about your new book, Small Business, Big Pressure. And I know that you're very active, like people can really find you online. I mentioned your site, smallbusinessbigpressure.com. You are on Twitter at Daryl W. Lyons. So that's D-A-R-R-Y-L-W-L-I-O-N-S. O and S. And in case you missed the spelling, no worries. Go to the show notes page and you'll find the links to everything there. And Daryl, if people would like to get in touch with you either to connect or to simply say thank you or maybe ask you questions, what is the, the quickest way to do that? Yeah, there's two ways. Daryl at smallbusinessbigpressure.com is an email, so they mm-hmm. can always shoot me an email. And then uh, also, you know, LinkedIn's very professional. I, I like the LinkedIn format. If they want right. to try to connect with me that way, that's that's real good too. Okay, so can I can I add the link to your LinkedIn account here in the show notes? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, so guys, you heard it. A couple of different ways to get in touch with Daryl. And if you've enjoyed this conversation, you want to really. Uh, dive deeper into what we've talked about here make sure to grab a copy of Daryl Lyons new book small business big pressure a faith-based approach to guide the ambitious entrepreneur Daryl thank you so very much for being here with us for telling us more about what you do and about your new book and congratulations on your book I really appreciate it hey thank you Jan I really enjoyed it thanks for today Okay, we are back. Daryl, thank you so much for being here and for telling us more about what you do, sharing your advice with us and and sharing some things on your upcoming book. So you heard it. If you're interested in checking out Daryl's new book and also get access to his ebook, 30 Small Business Startups Mistakes, make sure to check out the show notes over at yanilunga.com forward slash episode one. For six, when you're going to find the links to those things and everything else Daryl and I have talked about in this episode. This is it for today. Like always, thank you so very much for tuning in to the 36 Entrepreneur Podcast. I'll be back with you next week. And remember, keep rocking. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast. For more tips and tools, head over to www.janilunga.com.